Hello everybody, DJ Vic Vapor with you. Ableton Live Advanced Concepts and in this lesson or tutorial let's take a look at creating a, a drum kit that kind of evolves out of the, you know, we're, we're in the box. But if we have samples that are from drum kits that have variations of mics or variations of the way the drum was hit and it's recorded in good quality, there's actually a way you can work with that in Ableton to create sort of an evolving sound so that you're not always hearing exactly the same drum hit over and over. You're giving a subtle variation to the way the drum is performed to give it a more live feel, a more humanistic approach. So let's take a look at one of the ways we can achieve that and ultimately create our own drum kits that when played sound very human as opposed to the same sample, the same velocity, the same strike over and over and ultimately sounding like that very strict digital regiment. You want something that's in the box that has more of a live performance feel to it. And one of the ways we can achieve that, there's <clears throat> probably a couple different techniques, but this is the one that I've used more often than not. So let's take a look at that. I've got a MIDI channel here, I've got a clip, and I've got, we're going to work with snares in this tutorial. I'll just fold this. I've got a snare hit on the 2 and 4 on the C3 note. 2 and 4 C3 note. So let's go ahead and minimize that guy. Open up the bottom here. We're going to we're going to work with samplers, so we'll bring a sampler in. And now that we've got our sampler in, we want to go to the zone tab and it'll bring up this area here. I'm going to go to my um, loops. I've got an analog drums uh, pack that I downloaded for free that within this pack what they've given you is the kick drum. It's a Ludwig kick, but it says DN1, DYN1 all the way up to 12. That is the velocity scale. So one is very soft. You can barely even hear it. And 12 being the max. So those are the velocity scales. And then on your toms, you've got the velocity scale, but you've also got a little extra twist to it. Left hand and right hand velocities. So depending on whether it's hit with the right or left hand, which is going to give you some variation to the sound. And it goes on down through all the sounds within this kit are the same way, Tom. And then this is the snare, left, right hand, different velocities. Um, and then the different hits, the hi-hats and things like that, left, right hand and all the velocities. So it repeats itself just with different um, <clears throat> drums or instruments from that same kit and that same microphone setup. And let me show you where the, where you can get kits like this or drum sounds like this. This particular one, um, Analog Drums, was a free download. And it's from this site right here, analog drum, analogdrums.com. And they've got, you know, hundreds of different packs for you to browse through. You can feel free to purchase or, you know, if you take a look here, I think if you scroll through one of them. Yeah, this big mono analog drums, that's the one I downloaded. It was free as of whatever date this was recorded, so it could change. But anyhow, Analog Drums, good place to go. There's probably hundreds of other sites. This is just one of the ones that I um, have gone to and bought a few kits from, and they've got some really high quality stuff. So good job to the ladies and gentlemen there. Let's go back to our um, tutorial within Ableton though, and we're gonna work with snares. So I'll scroll down here, and we're gonna work with, <clears throat> I could choose any velocity I want. I'm going to choose um, 15 and 16 just so we get a louder velocity. You can go through here and pick any. You, with, the, with the particular kit that I'm using, I don't want like velocity 10 all the way through 16. There's too much of a velocity variation and too much of a difference in the sound that when this technique is utilized, it'll be too obvious that there's something not quite right. So I want to keep things relatively close in volume so usually within maybe three but in this tutorial I'll keep it within two so I'm going to choose 15 and 16 from the left hand and then we'll go down and get two more we'll get 15 and 16 from the right hand and we'll drag that's four samples we'll drag over here now we've got four samples in <clears throat> and I'm just gonna take this left-handed one and bring it down here so now I've got left, right, 
15 and left right 16 next to each other and then I can grab I'm gonna grab everybody shift highlight and I'm just gonna bring these over to C3 and we'll bring this down from this side to C3 and now one at a time I'll grab the next one down I'll just move it over one note and we'll do that with the rest of them keep moving them over to the right so you'll see how they line up here one after the other on different notes you don't want it to be too far apart you just want it to be the next one so now we've got C3 and the next notes up four times all right so I can go ahead and close this guy get rid of the zone the next part of this technique is to add out of our MIDI effects the random we'll put it before the sampler and we'll go about I go maybe like 80 84 is good you don't want to go 100 because it's not going to work quite the right way and now we've got four samples so I want the choices to be on three which will guarantee all four are played so you've got the original choice of C3 the note that every everything starts on that's one and then the other three will be the random choices that uh, the random plugin will make for us so now essentially let me open the zone back up so that you can see this in action what you'll see here is if you pay attention when I hit play on this clip you'll actually see different notes out of these four being struck so essentially we're getting a snare drum that's playing but there's subtle variations in every hit it's never the same one over and over and over even though your ear might not be able to pick it up on a laptop or whatever there is a nice humanistic element to the way this sounds because you're never getting the same drum hit over and over and it's creating a variation within the snare drum so let's listen to this and you'll see here notes are always being changed every once in a while it's the same one but it kind of you'll see it moving back and forth within those four off of our random settings it's a little quiet so let me um Put a utility here after it, maybe give it some volume. Just a nice subtle variation in every hit. But it's the trick to this technique that the variation's not enough that it's truly discernible. I mean, it is a little bit, but it's not like I was saying, if you get too much of a difference in velocity there. One will be real quiet, one will be real loud, and you don't really want that. You just want a nice subtle variation of that left hand, right hand, or that different top or bottom mic sound. So that's giving it that, I mean, it feels played, it feels live, and even though it's in the box, it feels like, you know, a drummer's playing and a person's actually playing it. Now, what you could do is right-click and group this, open this up, and continue to add, if you had maybe overhead mics, or if you had bottom mics, different mic elements, you could continue to add more samplers and continue to pile up this same technique with that same drum sound and get multiple layers and a little bit more variation to it. I think you can you don't want to go too far on the variation because you don't want it to be too discernible I think within my learning curve I've usually I usually try to stay within five samples of something just for the sake of it sounding real and you know still humanistic so great technique there and ultimately um, once you've got if I ungroup this once you've got this sampler set up in the way you like it you can take this sampler and let's say we have another MIDI track here. Um, put a drum rack in it. Now we've got a drum rack. If I wanted to, I could grab this sampler over here to the drum rack, put it, you know, wherever I wanted. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then I can build a complete drum kit. I can continue to use this same technique on hi hats, toms, and things like that. And then I would have a drum kit that I could open up and play and put a 
um, you know, a pattern together, but it's all going to sound played humanistically, if that makes sense. So hopefully this uh, technique makes sense to you and it's something that inspires you. And uh, as always, thanks for pushing play. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for your support. And um, see you on the next uh, tutorial. Peace.